Hello, Brother Sewing, friends and family. Uh, today, we have a really fun, really fun episode, but I have to tell you, I'm laughing because I just finished teaching a group of young girls how to sew. We miraculously rearranged the studio in 15 minutes, and now it looks like filming again. But we had eight girls here. It was so much fun, ages 10 to, I believe, 15, and we made little bags. It was a lot of fun. So anyways, in case I'm a little frazzled, it's because I'm back. <laughs> and I also spent 15 minutes untying the lace on my top. So because it was all tangled from the dryer again, you'd think I'd learn. So hey, Arnell. Hey, everyone. So guess what we're doing today? Well, last week on my show, I talked about I went on this great trip, fishing trip, and everyone had these super cute bathing suit cover-ups. And I thought, I need a couple of these, even something cute that I could run to the grocery store, anything like that. So I know that I'm doing some of this on my show tomorrow, but today I have one that's really fun. We're going to refashion two t-shirts into a really cute bathing suit cover-up. So I have over here, uh, well, you can kind of see part of it, a couple t-shirts. In fact, I bought four t-shirts, two of one style and two of another, because there's a couple ways that you could do this. So I thought it'd be really fun to show you from beginning to end. So what you'll need for this are two t-shirts for one project, <laughs> four if you're gonna do two. And you need some elastic. I have one inch wide elastic over there. Uh, I would probably use my serger for this, but I'm going to use a sewing machine because it's all set up and, and then I can run it to the serger later. So if you don't have a serger, no worries. You just need a sewing machine that will do a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch. So let me show you how this works. So I see you all rolling in. Hello, hello. And by the way, I'm a brand ambassador for Brother. We are streaming live on Brother Sewing and Crafting, Facebook and YouTube pages. So leave your comments. As I go through the lesson, I'm way over there, so I can't see all your comments. So make sure if you have questions and I miss them, ask them when I take a break to answer. All right? Hope you all had a great weekend, by the way. Fabulous weekend. Yes. Oh, by the way, one of the girls had fishing fabric. Girl after my own heart. Actually, she's a really good fisherman. She's, I think she's only, I want to say 10 years old, maybe 10. And she actually fishes tournaments with her dad and she beat Win one day. We won't tell Win that, but <laughs> he knows it. She's very good. All right, guys, let's go over to the table. Let me show you what I have here. So there is the dress form. I'll meet you right over there. I told you it was a long ways away. So hopefully you can still hear me. If you can't, I'll just talk loud. Okay, so I have two t-shirts. One, and I bought these for three bucks a piece, by the way. So just go to a store that has really inexpensive garments. But to be honest with you, this fabric, it feels like rayon. I couldn't even buy this for $3. So this is the front, and then the back has a little bit of a mesh, kind of cool. Right, and you can see the hem, and I'll show this closer too, but the hem is a little bit longer in the back, has a curve and a center back seam. So I bought two of those, and this one has sleeves. So on this one, we're gonna remove the sleeves, turn this into a bathing suit cover-up with an elastic waist. So I have two of those, and then the other style is this. I thought this was really cute. It's a tank, it kind of angles out. This is a cotton fabric, and see the cute neckline? All right, so before I take you to the table, I just want to point out a few things. Take your top and try it on yourself. And since I'm not going to try it on myself while I'm live with you, I'll use my dress form. And you could use your dress form as well. But I need to show you a couple markings that you need to have. A little static clean going on here. Okay. I think this top is so cute. Look at the back. It has that little mesh. I might have to sew one of these, but for three bucks, <laughs> I might as well just buy more in different colors, right? Okay, so for the bathing suit cover-up, the ones that I saw that were super, super cute, I have one inch wide elastic. So the first thing, I've already cut this to my waist or similar. You want to wrap the elastic around your waist. Now, my pins are way over here. Hold on. Um, you might want your bathing suit cover right at your waist, you might want, want it lower at your hips. But what I found to be one of the cutest and most flattering styles is to have it right at the waist 
and Blue Sant. Blue Sant? <laughs> Sounds like a donut. <laughs> Blue Sant, this fabric here. And see how cute that is? I love that. So put this on, put your top on yourself and put your elastic on. And then just kind of blouse up the t shirt as much as you want. Now, depending on your body shape, you might be, you might have more in the back lifted up or more in the front. So it's better if you do it on yourself than lay it on the table and cut it. Because if you do it on the table and all of a sudden you didn't leave enough room in the front, it might be shorter in the front and longer in the back. So that's my tip for the day for you. All right, so this is where it looks like this would be super cute on me. And t-shirt number two. I'm going to be getting rid of the top part of here. And you have to picture it's going to be attached here like a little skirt. You getting the idea? Okay, so the next thing you need to measure is how long from your waist down. I'll step back here. How long do you want the bottom of your bathing suit cover up, right? So I'm going to err on the longer side because I always seem to cut these too short and then I'm never going to wear them. So this is actually right at the armpits. I'm going to use that as a guide. So that's t-shirt number two. And then t-shirt number one, I'm going to mark with chalk and I'll bring it to the table so you can see me cut it. So now that I have this marked, I'm going to lift this up and right at the elastic line, give myself some chalk marks. I'm using wax chalk and it's not showing up very good. I'll grab some clay chalk. You'll see that better. Now, why am I not just cutting it? Why wouldn't I just do that? Because I might have marked it a little bit off. And so this will help me determine if I need to straighten my lines out a little bit. So I'm marking at the bottom of the elastic here and I'll mark at the top. So for this piece, uh, I'll actually be cutting along the bottom part though, but it gives me a guide if I mark both sides. So I'm marking at the bottom of the elastic. All right. This top is really cute. Take the elastic off and let's bring this to the table. Okay, I'll switch cameras for you and meet you at the table. <laughs> Thanks, Yvette. I saw that. You love it. I know. Isn't it fun? All right, so here's top number one that's at the top. Now, you can see my lines are a little bit not totally straight there. Well, let's just go ahead and measure from side to side. I don't think I'm too crooked in that area. So I'm just going to use my, I, you know what? I think you'll see a measuring tape better. Why is it that when I test this, it always looks great. And then when I need it, it doesn't look as good. All right. How's this? Orange. You'll see orange on pink, right? All right so here, here's my from the bottom to the top, that's about five inches. That looks good. And then here, bottom to the top, is that about five inches? Wow, I must be having a really good day because it's exactly the same. <laughs> so I want my side seams to be exactly the same. So let's lay this. I'm gonna lay this top layered. So I have the side seams on the side and you can see the back's a little bit longer on this t-shirt, but it won't be when I'm finished, right? unless that's where I marked it. So it looks like my back marking is right here, my side marking is here, and my front marking is just about here. Now, if you have little, maybe you have a dash down here and it's a little crooked, make sure you even that out. So I'm just gonna turn this sideways, it's easier to cut for me. And I don't need much of a seam allowance because I'm attaching this to elastic. So I really only need, gosh, maybe uh, three eighths of an inch, maybe. But to be safe, I will cut a little bit more. All right. Let's line this up, and I'm just going to trim. Let's 
So this is my top piece. Now on this piece, I wanna go ahead and cut away the sleeves. I really want a tank top. Although this would be kind of cute as a dress. Hmm, I guess I can wait and do the sleeves later. We'll leave them for now. Now, by the way, if you're going to cut the sleeves off, this bottom section here, this was the bottom of the t-shirt. These, this is the piece that you're gonna use for ribbing for the sleeves, just to give you a little heads up. So this is the front piece, all finished. Let's go back to this piece here. Here's t-shirt number two. And I love that the hem's gonna be longer in the back and shorter in the front, isn't that cool? And maybe the shirt was $3 because I can see little hanger imprints on here <laughs> from probably storing or something like that. And in fact, I even got this cheaper because it had a hole in the sleeve. So uh, that's called bargain shopping, right? <laughs> okay, so I wanna try to get as much of this section here that I can use for the skirt. So I just wanna check what is the width of my top? And if I compare it to right under the arms, gosh, it's pretty darn close. It's not exact. So I might have to take in my top just a little bit at the top. But for now, let's just go ahead and cut this. And I have this laid pretty flat, laid out pretty flat. I'm just gonna cut right under the armhole, straight across the top. Anybody want a really short top? There you go. <laughs> that might be a little too short for me, but I'm totally kidding, by the way. Okay, let's see what we have here. I'm making sure this is nice and straight so I can sew it on. Now, what, what I was trying to check, so if that's our bottom and this is our top, I'm just trying to check if these are the same width. You know what, they are so close that I'm not gonna bother with it. But let's just say that you had the bottom area and your top was like this much smaller or this much bigger. Then what you would do is you would actually mark the sides. In fact, I will mark this one because it is just a little bit. I'm just gonna give myself a little snip here. I need to take in the side about that much and about that much. So do you see what I lined that up with? The edge of the bottom. So when I go to sew these together, they will match. Otherwise you're stretching one piece to meet the other and that won't work as well. Okay, and let me just make sure this is nice and straight. I'm gonna double check one more time that I don't need to, okay, that's fine. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take in about from here, you can actually see where the shirt curves out. I'm gonna take it in from here to here. So flip your shirt right side out. And again, I'm going to do all of this on the sewing machine uh, just because I have it set up. And you could use a serger and make it really fast too. And I'm using green thread so you'll be able to see this. If anyone ever saw the inside of all my garments, I could just blame it on all of you watching, right? Because I'm trying to make so you could see it. It'll be a new trend. So start here. You can kind of see where the shirt curves out. Start here and then stitch down right to that snip. And then on the other side, you can see where it starts to angle out. That's right where I'll start my seam. And again, right down to where this the snip is about right here. Okay, let's go to the sewing machine. On my way there though, I will stop and double check you have any questions so far. So, so far we have the two t-shirts, we hacked them up. <laughs> We're gonna sew them together. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, thanks Yvette. <laughs> if you do, ask it now. Change your mind on the fly. You have to, Terry. <laughs> you gotta change your mind on the fly. Oh, Jerry, welcome, first timer. Uh, Susie, welcome while working. And I see Reen. So I see the whole wolf pack rolling in. Welcome, everyone. Okay, so you don't have any questions? I'm going to the sewing machine. Take the comment down. And see you there. Feel free to keep asking, though. Oh, thanks, Josie. I love the fringe. Donna, you're not too late. You haven't missed too much. Let's 
So I have to, as I'm sewing, I got to tell you, one of the young girls today got to sew on the Star Wars, the brother Star Wars machine. Oh, she had so much fun. But I think out of all the machines the girls were using, the NS80 definitely won hands down. All right, so I'm sewing a knit, but this part of the knit is never going to stretch because the top is bigger than I am. If it was going to be fitted, I would need to do a zigzag stitch because if I stretched it, you don't want to pull your stitches out. Now, if you're using a serger, you would just run this through the serger. I'm just going to use a straight stitch because I'm just doing this for a demo. And also the top is way bigger than I am. So it's never going to stretch this length because I'm going to have elastic. Remember, it's going to be a boussant. So straight stitch. I'm going to go with a stitch length of 2.5 for now. I'm using a knit needle. Well, it's not really called a knit. Stretch needle is what I'm using. You could also use a ballpoint if you wanted to. And I'll just stitch right inside my snip there and do a back stitch. Now, by the way, just a little tip for you. I don't know if you saw my fabric kind of buckle right there. If you're using a thin knit, a thinner knit, like your fabric's like really slinky and thin, and you have any problems with your knit fabric getting stuck in your needle plate, make sure you change it to the one with the small hole, okay? All right. Okie doke. And stitch all the way down. Little back stitch there. Okay, so this knit will not fray. So I'm, again, if you have a serger, run this through the serger. If you don't, and the fabric's not going to fray, I'm just going to trim it so it matches the entire seam allowance. You could also run this through the sewing machine with an overlock stitch, but really, if the fabric doesn't fray, don't waste the stitches on here. The serger always looks nice. Okay, right here, I'm going to trim this side off. All right, so our top is finished. Now we need to attach this to the bottom. So let's go back to the table. Okay. Now, if your back is longer than the front, make sure that you have your top of your top facing the right way, all right? Otherwise, you're going to sew your front to the back, and that would look a little bit really funny, right? So here I have, this is my the top of my top, this is the front, and this is the front of the skirt. So I'm just going to take this inside out. I'm turning the skirt inside out and capturing the edge of the top down below. So I have right sides together. And I'll, don't worry, I'll get this laid out flat for you. Just, it's a little slinky. I just wanna make sure I have it right before I start pinning. Now, I don't usually pin with knits. If you do, make sure that you're pinning in the seam allowance because it could puncture your fabric. I'm using silk pins, so they're really sharp. I don't usually have problems with that, but just so you know. All right, how do you reduce bulk in this area here? Now, I haven't attached the elastic yet, by the way. I've only, this is just the skirt to the top. So put your seam allowance for one of them. Maybe I'll do the, the skirt going one way and the top going the other. That will even out your fabric so you don't have a lot of bulk in the side seams. All right. And I'm just gonna go all the way over to the other side seam. Again, I'll have the skirt going to the back and this one going this way. It really doesn't matter, just whichever one you pick. Actually, what I, if you're like, which one should I do? Should I face the skirt towards the back? The skirt has a hem and figure out which way the skirt is in the hem, which is actually going that way. So I'm gonna switch it. I'm gonna take this going that way and the seam allowance going this way.
okay? And we still have like a little itsy bitsy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make a really good laugh with you right here. You see what's here at the back of my, this is the back of my skirt, a little piece of mesh. Do you really want that in the center back of your tush? Probably not. So <laughs> I'm just going to trim this a little bit and cut that part out. I mean, I guess if you had a really cute bathing suit, go for it, but um, I don't. So I'm cutting it off. <laughs> and guess what that's gonna do? That's gonna make the bottom a little bit longer, a little bit wider, but I'm just gonna ease it in. It's a bathing suit cover up, right? There, now no peekaboos anymore. This little mesh piece is gone. <laughs> Placement. Placement is about everything, isn't it? All right, so I'm just going to pin this. I'm pinning it just so I have a guide. Once, once I get to the sewing machine, this knit is so flimsy. And if for some reason you sew together one part longer or shorter than the other, you could have problems. So, All right, let's go to the front. Okay, so that's pretty close. So I'm going to now go stitch this all the way around. So I'm stitched the skirt to the top. Now, you could do this with a serger, but I would really, even if I use a serger, I would at least base this together first because when we're finished, we'll have this bigger section that needs to fit into our elastic. All right, so keep that in mind. So go ahead, I'm gonna just use a straight stitch, go all the way around sewing this together. Meet you at the machine. All right, so uh, what did you say, Deb? Is that Deb that said, do uh, what size? Do you, oh, Barb, I'm sorry. Do you buy a size bigger? So it, um, I actually held up the top and it was pretty loose. So you would hold the top up. If it's a fitted top, you'd want to go a size bigger because you want it to be loose in the waist and loose for a skirt too. So you could go a size bigger. You could even go a couple size up and just cut it down too. But yes, don't do the exact same size, especially if it's fitted like the Rouge T or something like that. Oh, Elizabeth asked that too. Yeah. So I actually, for this, I think I bought, were these a small? These were a small, but they looked awfully big for a small. Let's go with that. Making sure I'm not missing any more questions before I keep sewing. Oh, thanks so much. And we have Canada in the house. All right, let's go to the sewing machine. Oh, Donna, you know that's funny? This does look like the knit that you bought for me, and it feels like it. It's rayon. I know, and I walked to the store. You know me, I'm touching the fabrics, and I was like, wow, this is really nice for three bucks. <laughs> Oh, and on 4.30 in the morning. Oh, my gosh. Good morning. Have a cup of coffee with us. Okay. Back to the sewing machine. Now I'm using green thread so you can see everything. Don't forget. I'll just start at the side seam, or I think this is the side seam. Give yourself a healthy seam allowance because you don't want, you know, the knit fabric can move around and you don't want to accidentally sew on one layer, not the other. Okay, seam allowance. I'm gonna do a stitch length of 3.0 and just stitch, a straight stitch. Again, because this is gonna be bigger than I am, I'm not going to be stretching this. Otherwise, you're going to need to use a zigzag. Now, when I attach this to the elastic, I'm going to have to use a zigzag. So for now, I'm just sewing it together. You could use a basting stitch as well if you wanted to. Okay. 
Okay. And you can see my seam allowance is definitely moving around, but I cut the fabric. It's not totally straight after I trimmed that section. I'm not worried about it. I'm just gonna sew it, and once I attach it to the elastic, I can trim that off anyways, okay? But that's why I said when you're attaching it, make sure you have a healthy seam allowance because you'd rather have more than less. And we gave ourselves a little extra room anyways. Okay, so there's our stitch. There's my seam allowance. Now we're going to go back and attach this to the elastic. But first thing I need to do is trim this so it's nice and even to attach to our elastic. Let's go back to the table. Actually, um, before we go back to the table, I'm gonna grab my elastic. We need to sew our elastic into a circle. So lay it flat, fold it over like this, okay? Use a zigzag stitch. And just sew back and forth. And now our elastic is secured. If you have any extra, just trim it off. All right, now. I'll check a few questions and I'll meet you at the table. All right, let me just check if you have, anybody have any questions so far? Uh, you know, Debbie, I would not use a walking foot on it. No, I mean, you could if you wanted to, but I would not. Hi, Amy, your embroidered top look awesome. And I agree, I love rayon. Oh, Jane, I have the luminaire. Do you know how to stop the foot raising uh, when you're sewing? Yes, when I go back to the sewing machine, sewing machine, I'll show you. It's just a little button. You probably have the pivot feature on is what I'm guessing. And anything else? No more questions? Okay, let's go. Making sure I'm not missing anything. I can scroll down a little bit, but not too far. So if I missed your question, just ask it again. All right, meet you at the table. Okay, so we have our back, our front. It's looking awfully cute. Now I'm just gonna use a Sharpie on here because you'll see it better. I need to mark the center back of my elastic. I'll use this red pen. So we'll use this as the center back. Uh, by the way, do not use a Sharpie on your clo own clothes. What you'd want to use is a fabric marking pen. But I don't have one right here. So, so there's our front and back. And now let's mark our sides. I'm just quartering these. It gives me a guide. If yours is, you know, maybe you have more fabric in the front than the back. Just keep that into consideration. It's not written in stone, but it'll give you a guide for lining this up. Now, you have to picture that when the top is on, it's going to blouse like this. So your seam allowance is actually gonna to go towards the top, meaning that your elastic, let me just attach this and I'll show you. So if here's my skirt, and here's my top, your seam allowance is gonna be facing up towards the top. So meaning my elastic will attach like this. I'm just gonna double check that that's correct. It is early in the week. <laughs> I'm gonna flip this around so you can see it. I'm just gonna put a pin in the back just to check this. So here's my skirt. I'm attaching the elastic going that way. So when I have this on, that's correct. The elastic will face up 
and the top of your top will kind of blouse over it. So line your elastic up right on the edge of the fabric. And I'm actually gonna line my elastic up right along my stitch line. I told you I was gonna trim that anyways. So that you'll see it better at the sewing machine, but ideally you would want to have that a nice straight edge and line your elastic up there. All right, so a side seam looks like it's gonna be right here. So I'm gonna to have to stretch the elastic just a little bit to get this to fit better. So you can see I'll have to stretch just a little bit as I sew. And I usually go from either side seam to center back or center front. Don't give yourself too much area to stretch. Otherwise, uh, sometimes it doesn't work out very well. All right, so let's mark the center front of our garment. Looks like the center front is right here. I'm gonna give myself a snip as a guide. Again, I'm lining up the edge of my elastic with my previous stitch line, and I'll have to stretch a little bit there as well. So you'll see as I sew, once I get to the side seam, you'll see me just stretch just lightly, gently, to make sure that my elastic is the same length as the garment. And I'm using a knit elastic, so sports elastic. All right, that looks great. Let's go back to the machine. All right, and Donna, on the way to the machine, I saw your question. Generally, how tight do you have the elastic? Hmm. Donna, it really depends because if you're using, this is a one inch wide elastic, so it's pretty snug. If you're using a thinner elastic, it's almost four inches over because that thin elastic stretches out as you sew it. So I, you just have to test it but it's pretty snug. Don't have it loose, but because by the time you sew it, it'll stretch out and it'll fall off. So just kind of give it a little. Each one is different too. So Yvette, yes, you could buy two different sizes too. All right, so back to the sewing machine and I'll try to show you that pivot function too. So first, <coughs> excuse me, I've been talking too much today. I need more tea. All right, so I'm just going to do a little test here on this fat piece of fabric. I just want to ask you a question, the one that wanted to know the pivot. Does your machine go like this where you stop and the foot goes up? Is that what you're referring to? Uh, I'm... My foot's on the pedal, it stitches, and my pedal, I stop sewing and it lifts up. This is what we call the pivot feature. So I'm not gonna pivot obviously with a zigzag stitch, but let me just show you on the screen what you should change. So those of you that get seasick, close your eyes for 30 seconds. Looks like Blinky is going into effect. It's this button right here. When it's off, it will not raise. When it's on, that's what we call the pivot feature, which is great if you're going around curves or quilting or small seams where you're doing top stitching. So I'll turn it off. That's it. And I have my machine right now set for a zigzag stitch. And that's what I'm going to use to attach the fabric to the elastic. All right, so close your eyes for a sec. I'm moving you back. Must be getting better at this. Nobody's getting sick yet. Okay. All right, back to, I'm gonna start at just the side seam, any side seam or the center back, it doesn't matter. I'll start at the center back. Again, I'm trying to line the edge of my elastic close to my stitching line because then I won't see that. And I need that zigzag stitch on here because you are gonna stretch your elastic. So if you don't have a zigzag stitch, you'll stretch it right out. So I'm gonna line up my foot right on the edge it's right on the edge of my foot here. I'm going to just do a couple stitches here. Actually, I'll get a little closer to the center back. 
There's a lot of bulk right there, so I don't want to stretch at the center back. And I'm also going to lengthen my stitch just a little bit longer. So I'm at a 1.8 length and a 3.5 width. All right, so I have the center back. Now I'm going to just gently stretch my elastic. And as I stretch my elastic with my left hand, I can take my right hand and grab it right in the middle. And that's where I'll sew to. All right. I have my marking for the side seam right here. Hold that right on the side seam and give it a little stretch. And I'm just guiding the fabric underneath, making sure my stitch line is right next to my elastic. And I'll stitch right up to that side seam. Okay. Oh, that pivot feature would be nice right now, wouldn't it? So let's try that for the next one. I'm going to lift up my presser foot, slide all my fabric back under, because I'm only stitching through one layer. Now, if you don't have your machine in bed, flat surface, you could actually slide this right over the edge of your sewing machine, which is kind of nice too. So we're back to the side seam to the center front. Oops, put my foot back down. And actually, I'm going to turn the pivot feature off because I need that foot to be down to hold this. So I'm going to take my finger here, stretch my elastic with my left hand, use my right hand to gather somewhere in the middle, and let it stitch. Now, if you had a serger, you would do the exact same process and run it down the serger, not the sewing machine. You wouldn't need to run it to the sewing machine if you have a serger. And if you did that, you would actually be trimming off all this fabric at the same time. Okay, stretch it. Let's pick somewhere in the middle. And then this end right here. To the side seam get my fingers out of the way and we're uh, almost finished here so stretch with your left hand grab somewhere in the middle with your right so much easier than having pins all through the whole thing right getting to the end I do a little back stitch Now I have you here, I just want to show you. So this is the edge, you see underneath, my zigzag stitch is right below or right next to my green. So I use green threads, so you can see that. So if you have a serger and you haven't run it through the serger, maybe you're just stitching it first to test it. Now you would run it through the serger. If you don't have a serger, go back and trim off all of this excess seam allowance. And again, if you have questions, ask them. I'll be back over there in just a second. Okay. And last. Make sure you're not cutting your elastic. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So here is the elastic casing. Let's go back to the table and see what this looks like. Okay, any more questions before I take you back to the other table? Okay. Oh, you're welcome. And Amy, she answered your question. I just bought a size small in women's, but it was a big small. Like it was too big for me. Okay. See you at the table. Let's go to the dress form first. All 
Okay, so here is, let's see what it looks like. This is what it looks like just hanging. Put it on the dress form. This is really cute. I can already tell. <laughs> We're getting there. There's a lot of static cling in here. <laughs> okay. Now, by the way, you could make your own too. We're going to be doing that tomorrow with the Bella pattern, but I thought this would be kind of fun with two t-shirts because that's what a lot of us have on hand. Or you could do two different t-shirts that are different t-shirts too, have a different top than a bottom. Oh my goodness, is this cute? I love this, but I have to confess, if I'm gonna wear a bathing suit cover up, I don't want sleeves. So, as you saw, my first tops, I bought two of these too, and this one already was a tank top. I'm gonna do a very similar bathing suit cover up out of this. It's a thinner fabric. I might add embroidery to it first. That's for a later lesson. But for this one, let's get rid of these sleeves. So, let me just see how tight these sleeves are. Now, by the way, this would be very cute with the sleeves too. I'm just thinking bathing suit cover up, I need a tank. So why don't I just mark one side? I'm just checking it out just to see what we have here. Do you want racer back or do you want just a nice tank? So for the bathing suit cover-ups, you're gonna want your armhole to be a little lower, like lower than my tank top. You'd want it to be kind of down. It's a loose, it's supposed to be going over your bathing suit, right? So it's gonna be looser. And I have plenty of room here. So I will actually start cutting, getting rid of probably an inch in from my sleeve and I'm gonna go down maybe at least an inch because we're going to be adding a binding. Now, do you have a cover stitch machine? Because if you have a cover stitch machine, that will be the fastest way to finish this armhole. Or you can add binding. So I'll show you, I'll show you the options. Okay, back to the table. Uh, let me switch camera for you. Okay, it would be a cute dress. I agree. Okay. This would be a very cute dress. You know, now you're making me think of, now you're making me think about it. I already have one that's a tank top. Should I leave this as a, as just a cute dress to wear to the grocery store and stuff? Or should I turn it into a bathing suit cover up? Oh, uh, wait a sec, you guys vote. Do you wanna leave it with sleeves or turn it into a tank? Donna says a dress. Uh, Lois says she leaves sleeves for sun protection. Oh, hey, Michelle. Michelle says dress. I agree, Cynthia. Well, so, and that's the thing, it's usually when we're on the boat, we're running around, or maybe running to get a couple groceries or get a bag of ice or something like that. Uh, tank, tank. Everybody's saying it would make a great dress. I agree. Hmm. Everybody says dress, dress. So you want me to leave it? Leave it, okay. Well, my work just got 
Cut in half. <laughs> Use another tank for a swimsuit. Okay, I'm going to leave it. You all are so much fun. So let's put it back on the dress form and double check the fit. Make sure I don't have to make any other changes. The only thing I might do if I leave it for a sleeve is I don't like a full long short sleeve. So let me just show you how I would mark that. How's that? <laughs> um, it's, this one isn't really thin enough to see through. The other one is. Yeah. Oh, a slit up the sleeve. That would be cute. Debra. Oh, I like that. One just like this. Oh, I think that that might be a really fun idea. Let's go see if we have enough fabric for that. Okay, so there's the bottom. Here's the elastic. Let's take a closer look at the sleeves. I can either cut them off, turn them into a tank, or I like your idea. So remember this piece we cut off at the beginning? This is what we would have to use as our ribbing. Now, the top was longer in the back than the front. So you actually have to look at your knit. And if I cut my strips down here, see how it's kind of a little wonky? I would need to cut them straight across the grain. It'd be the cross grain. And that's the part that's nice and stretchy. If I do it this way, it's angled and you can kind of see where I get that little ripple. So I would have to cut going this way. So let's see how much fabric we have. Um, I will cut two inch wide binding just in case I turn it into a tank. You know me, I can never make up my mind. And let's cut one more piece, two inches. Now this is not totally straight, so let me straighten this out a little bit. Now I have a seam right here. I'd rather not use the seam, so let's, I'll just keep cutting, see how much we have. Mm. Well, we might have enough. So if I were to take the sleeve, and slit up and around to put one of these. How much fabric do you need? Oh, this much. So I could slit up to here. Mm, I don't know about that. Unless I have a seam at the top. You know what? I would have to have a seam at the top up here as well if I turned it into a tank top. I think I just don't have quite enough fabric there. Close. Well, I'll tell you what, let's just try it. And if it doesn't work, I'll turn it into a tank top. So I'm laying my sleeve totally flat. And if I wanted to have a little cute tie, I would open this up a little bit. Turn that into an oval. See that? I put my arm in here. And now I could put some binding around here and turn it into a little tie. That's how simple you can do that. So that's one option. Let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna take some binding and I'll pin this with you on here. We'll sew one side just to see. If I don't like it, I'll cut it off. So this piece seems a little bit longer. Let's try this. I'm folding, let's see. This is the top edge. And this is the top of my sleeve. I'm not adding binding. I'm just taking one layer of this binding, or I guess this two inch strip, I would say. And you're not stretching when you put this on the sleeve either. You're just going one to one, one strip, one to one. Because you're gonna, you'd probably be able to see the back side of this, which is why I'm not. Make sure I have the right side here. I do. <laughs> so 
sew it all the way on and find out that you have the wrong sides with the right sides, that was not good. Okay. And let's check this out. If I go all the way down to the edge of the sleeve, I still have this much fabric left before I get to that side seam. So that works. Let's see about the other side. Now, again, I'm just going to stitch this with uh, my green thread with a straight stitch. Serger would make it a little faster, but... Okay. So I have one layer, wrong sides together. I had just enough fabric, so I went all the way around the sleeve edge, and I have a little extra at the bottom for a tie. What a great idea. Let's go to the sewing machine and see what we have. Okay, so I have to tell you, this is a really fun idea. So just picture this. Now I have pins in here, I have to be very careful. On the sleeve, it'll have just a little tie and a little opening. What a great idea! <laughs> okay, back to the sewing machine. Okay, sorry for the bump. All right, I just one layer now. I'm just gonna use a straight stitch, not a zigzag, because you're not really gonna stretch this section of your top, so you don't have to worry about it ripping out. I'm gonna use this beautiful green thread so you can see it. Do a little back stitch, and I'm gonna use a stitch length of 3.0. All the way around the sleeve. Okay. So here's the sleeve edge. Got all this extra binding. So now I would take this binding, and I think if I put the camera just right, you'll still be able to see it from here. Laying this flat, push your fabric going into the binding, and I'm just gonna fold this over like a double fold. You could do this at the ironing board too and just press this if you wanted to. Now, you could use fabric clips if you don't have real good sharp pins and you're worried about puncturing your fabric. So this is like a binding, but there's no raw edges showing because I'm flipping it around to the back side and covering up the seam allowance and the seam. Now, when it comes down to this part, I will probably take this to the iron and press it. I'm just going to pin it now just so you can see what this ends up looking like. We'll put it on the dress form because if I decide to keep this, then what I would do is I would actually um, change it to pink thread because I think green thread on this, if I was out and about, people would be staring, wondering what the heck. Or it might be one of you that said, I saw that show. <laughs> All right, now, uh, if you have a cover stitch machine, by the way, this would look great with a chain stitch. Because see how it stretches a little bit? The, the chain stitch on the cover stitch machine would be a really good option here. All right, so all the way around, let's go around the other side. And what I'm gonna do is just um, pin this, on, or put this back on the dress form and we can vote. Either it's gonna be this type of sleeve, or now that I've already cut the sleeve, it's either gonna be this or a tank. I 
I actually think I really like this though. I mean, I don't know for sure because I have to see it on the dress form, but. All right. Pinned all the way around. Now you could actually run a zigzag stitch through here if you if you were worried about this stretching out. Um, that would look kind of cute. There are some decorative stitches you could use as well. All right, and for I saw somebody ask, "What machine are you on?" The Luminaire XP2. It's a great machine. Great lighting under here. So let's go back to the dress form and try this on. And then I'll come back and take your questions. And then we probably should vote. Oh, Michelle, a rouge, a rouge sleeve. That would have been cute, too. Okay, so. We've already been on a whole hour? Wow. All right, well, I'll wrap her up. It's pretty good, considering uh, we changed our mind in the middle of our project. But that's how I do all of these. Sometimes I start working on it and I'll think, you know, maybe I don't like that or maybe I like this better. Or And then plus I get all of your votes, which is really fun. I would have never thought of this idea. And I think it's going to be a winner. All right, let's get this on there. Elastic turned up the right way. The knit is definitely sticky today. Oh, I love this. What a good idea. So let me take this back here. So take a look at this adorable dress. Bathing suit cover up, dress, whatever you want. And this, this fabric is not see-through, so you actually could wear this as a dress. Bring it over here. There's the back. Here's the original sleeve. Kind of boring, right? Mm -mm. And here's the new sleeve, which I think is going to be super fun. So bring this closer. And then once I sewed this, you could just tie it. And your arm could come out. You'd have two little ties hanging down. And what a great idea. I love it. And I had just enough fabric for it. All right, so what are your thoughts? Are you going to try this? I think that's fun. So next time that I'm on, I'm going to, tomorrow we're going to be sewing a different cover-up with the Bella, remember? Uh, but I found these two tops too, so I'm going to have to work on some embroidery. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. Okay, check your questions before I run. What do you think? Super cute, huh? Oh, I agree. I love it. Great idea. Everybody says yes. And it was so easy to do. You saw, I started this an hour ago and I'm finished. And I even took a few breaks to uh, take this up a cup of tea. I like the new sleeve. I think this one gets an A plus. Put an emoji down below and let me know what you think of the dress. I hope there's no sad faces though. <laughs> We'll go with the love and the cuteness, right? Oh, thanks, Linda. Oh, thanks. Elizabeth, did I get your email? No, I'll go look in the junk folder, though, because I did not see one from you. But I'll see you in the Fashion Sewing Club this afternoon, so I'll double check before then. Oh, I'm getting the A pluses. All right. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, so... This is really fun. I will see you tomorrow on um, Angela Wolf page at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This afternoon at 4, you'll see Cindy Hogan for Software Shut-In. And let me just bring up the Brother website. If you look down below, don't forget they have so many new blogs showing up. So you might want to check it out. If you go to Brother Sews, scroll to the bottom, and they have a crafting and a sewing uh, blog. So check them both out. They're great. Oh, thanks. I love, I'm loving the new emojis. <laughs> uh, Marsha, Fashion Sewing Club today is at 3.30.
in the 30 minutes. I'll, I'll go get some tea and see you in 30 minutes. I already added you to it too. And Cindy's at four. I'm tomorrow at 1.30. And on Thursday at noon, Barbara Jones is coming on, if I remember correctly. I don't have it right in front of me. So, all right, everyone, have a great day. Brother Sewing and Crafting, Let thank you for letting me take over your page. This is so much fun. And there's nothing better than refashioning because now I want to give you some ideas. Go to your closet. If you have two t-shirts that don't match, who cares? The skirt's a little bit different than the top. Have fun with this. And I actually love that new sleeve. I might have to just do that to a couple t-shirts to jazz them up a little bit. So what a great idea you had. I love it. Again, if you have questions, you can leave comments. We always go back and check them later. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. It's above and tag us. We always love to see. And if you make this bathing suit cover up, don't forget to tag me. I would love to see it. Especially I love new colors for summer, right? And summer's still here. Exactly. All right. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'm Angela Wolf, Brother Brand Ambassador, and this has been a really fun show. And now I just have to do one more sleeve and I have something to wear this weekend. All right. Bye, everyone.